Julio, you know, I, I told you to stay all night and uh, I'm kind of regretting that I stayed all night with you to look at this, these EGs and we've got this one last one and I just don't know if I can do it. It was a rough night. What can I say? I wish we had a, a real expert here. I feel struck by sleep deprivation. Oh, this is striking. <laughs> Dr. Struck is here. Oh, wow. Aaron Struck, welcome. Wow. Yeah, Starting with the puns right away. <laughs> exciting. So oh, no, looks like we have two uh, very uh, out of capacity neurologists. So I better take a look at this EEG very quickly. I, you know what? The, the main question the team had for this one is uh, is just are, what? How likely is this person to have seizures? I know that, that we don't have very many machines, and they want to you know hospitals tightening down. They want to make sure we only use machines on people where it's gonna pay off, where there's something to find. So I, we need your help figuring out if this patient's at risk for seizures and when we can stop. Yeah, so we can go home. Oh, like wow. That is something that I know a little bit about. So I'm oh, glad I'm handy. around to help you out with this. Awesome. You're driving by the air and you can just- All uh, right. So let's take a look at this. Whenever I'm first looking at an EEG, what I wanna do is orient myself to the montage. So this EEG is in bipolar. It looks like it has a left temporal derivation and right underneath it, so I can directly compare, is the right temporal derivation. And it has the left parasagittal, right parasagittal, and the midline. And then I want to assess, you know, is it a gestalt feel? Is there symmetry between the two sides? So between left, right, left, right, and midline, is there any kind of asymmetry? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, from a preliminary level, it looks to be, you know, dramatically different. I was going to guess the same thing, but I, I just didn't dare because I'm so sleep deprived. <laughs> but I think I can see that you're talking about these uh, little discharges. These are kind of interesting discharges. They're not, I can't tell if there's one or a bunch of them all together. Yeah. Is it artifact? These discharges, well, if we want to think about if they're artifact, do they seem to have a field that would come from the brain? Hmm. So it looks like if you're looking for the area of maximal negativity, what you want to do is look for a phase reversal. So where are the little arrows pointing at each other? So it looks mm -hmm. like F7, T3, it's actually kind of neutral, but the arrows are pointing you know, right there. Right. So I would say it's probably isopotential there, but that's the area of maximal negativity. So kind of anterior temporal, mid temporal area. But then okay. if you look Oh, it's actually even going a little bit further back. And it has another kind of negativity at P3. So it looks, looks to have a pretty broad field over the left hemisphere. This seems like a physiologically plausible field. So I, I wouldn't think that this is artifactual. It doesn't line up with EKG. I don't see any kind of other movement artifact associated with it. Mm -hmm. So in my eye, uh, this looks like it's probably coming from the brain and it looks like it's only coming from that one side. So when it's coming from one side, typically we use the term lateralized. So these are lateralized and how often are they coming? So each one of these, you know, little boxes here is one second. So there's, you know, one, you go a couple of seconds, another one, you know, almost here, it's getting to be about half a Hertz. Mm -hmm. So it's around maybe half a hertz on this page. We can look. Maybe it speeds up a little bit. Yeah, that, that looks different. But that's uh, but here. It's almost yeah one hertz. So we would call these lateralized periodic discharges, okay. and these are associated with uh, seizures. You know, around ten to twenty percent of people who have LPDs like this, mm. use an abbreviation, have seizures. And then there seems to be this little thing that comes after it. Mm -hmm. So this is you know, in the same distribution as the lateralized periodic discharges, but it's of a faster frequency and it's continuous. It doesn't have these breaks between the discharges. And let's count out how long it lasts. One, two, three, four, five. It's like six, six and a half seconds. And it almost seems to evolve towards the end. Mm -hmm. And it has, you know, a rather fast frequency. So let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's like a theta range, lower alpha range. Mm -hmm. And the term that we've used for these are called brief rhythmic discharges or sometimes brief ictal slash interictal rhythmic discharges or more fun, we call them birds because it's very fun to say birds. <laughs> so now we have LPDs, 
and we have these birds. And these are even evolving ones in the theta range that's typically associated with acute brain injury to have theta range lateralized birds like this. Mm -hmm. At least uh, that's according to Dr. Yu, that's really been the one that's described much of this. So now these, um, according to the two helps to B score, which is something that we've developed to try and figure out who's at risk of having seizures, um, they get one point for the LPDs. And then because this pattern is so close to a seizure, like if this went on for another four seconds, you would call it an electrographic seizure. Mm -hmm. uh, you get two points for this. So this patient already has three points they're very likely to go on to have a seizure. I would just based on these, you know, 20 or so seconds that we've looked at, I would tell the tech, this patient needs to remain on EEG and they need to come uh, or they need to remain on continuous EEG. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't we, somebody that can come off. You might we, even consider in pure treatment at this stage. Could we just um, go over that score you mentioned again? And oh, it? oh, yeah, that would be great. So it's called two helps to be. I, what I, a clever acronym. Yes. It, it just rolls off the tongue. What, what does it stand for? So the 2H stands for two hertz. So if you have either lateralized periodic discharges, generalized periodic discharges, lateralized rhythmic delta activity, or bilateral independent um, periodic discharges, if you have any of those at... Uh, you know, slightly over two hertz, that would get you one point. Mm -hmm. Now the E stands for epileptiform discharges. And what we mean by that are sporadic epileptiform discharges. So if you have, you know, say you have these LPDs going on, but then you also have a generalized spike wave that would get you an extra point. So a sporadic epileptiform discharge independent of you know, the distribution of any ongoing periodic arrhythmic discharges would get you one point. And the L stands for our old friend, uh, lateralized uh, periodic discharges. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have, and we kind of lumped a few things together here. So LPDs, LERDA, which is lateralized rhythmic delta activity, which is a phenomenon pretty closely associated with LPDs, at least that's where the literature's uh, trending, and bilateral independent periodic discharges another pattern very closely associated with LPDs. We kind of lump those together. If you have any one of those, you get one point. You don't get extra points if you have more than one of them because we feel uh, they're fairly closely related. Mm -hmm. The P stands for plus features. And you know, even on these LPDs here, you might make an argument that there, there's a little bit of plus features. So the big plus features associated with uh, LPDs. So these would be a plus feature associated with LPDs, LERDA, or with... Um, and the pluses are plus, plus fast activity or plus rhythmic features? Exactly, associated with uh, any of those phenomena. Or if with LERDA, they can be plus sharp features. So if you have, you know, what seems like spikes superimposed in the LERDA, that would get you another point. So if you get plus features, that would get you another one. Mm -hmm. Then the S stands for a history of seizure. And this could be a remote history of epilepsy, or if the patient had, you know, generalized tonic clonic convulsion in the ED, and they're encephalopathic for an hour and you hook them up, that would count as a, as a prior seizure as well. So acute symptomatic seizures get thrown in there as well. And then the 2B stands for our old friend of uh, birds. You get two points for birds because they're so close to electrographic seizures. Hmm. Okay. And then based on the number of points, you get a pretty good idea of how long a patient needs to be on EEG and how likely they are to have a seizure. Hmm. All right, Aaron, so if you have LPDs, you get points. That says two, two hertz LPDs. You get points for the L and the two hertz. Exactly, yep. So what, and if they're plus, you could even get another point. What do we use this 10 second uh, cutoff, Aaron, for the, for the birds? Where did we cut, get that from? Yeah. Well, that's the right. So it's, because, it's because we have 10 fingers. <laughs> so, and we so base the so numerical system on 10. So it's relatively arbitrary. We don't, there isn't strong you know, empiric evidence that at 10 seconds, something else changes that the seizure is more likely to go on longer or that it's associated with underlying neurophysiology. That's awesome. We got our, our answer, Brendan. I think we know, we, we can tell the team some recommendations and uh, 
and go home and get a nap. It's true. It's true. I, I don't want you to actually go home very long. I, I need you back here reading the EGs again because I, I guys are so brutal at MGH. Just work all, all of the day, huh? Yeah, uh, don't go home. Can I assign uh, Aaron for the billing of this one, Brandon? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's only fair. I, you saw how bad my handwriting was. I'm, I'm really not competent right now to, to make any judgments about this. Thanks, Aaron. We appreciate it. You struck us with love and knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> we need to work on our jokes, though. We, well, awesome. This was great. Great. All right. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you. Good night.